We're going to talk about today the most important aspect in training, recovery. We don't get stronger when we train. We damage our bodies. We put a stimulus and stress onto our bodies. It's only during recovery that our bodies react to that stimulus and stress and get stronger. So recovery is by far the most important aspect in how we can become better athletes. The better recovery techniques that we're able to provide ourselves, the easier it is for us to recover from one workout to the next. That allows us to train harder, that allows us to train longer than any other athlete. There are different types of recovery techniques that we're gonna go over today. The first recovery technique that's the most important one is sleep. Teenagers do this really well. College students, not so much. All right, and as we get older, sleep is something that becomes a sacrifice. We have children, we have careers, we have late nights, we have parents that we have to take care of. All of those things become sacrifices and we sacrifice sleep in order to find the time. Sleep is where we make the most new cells and where we, where we repair most of our cells. Sleep is where we archive all the memories in our brains. And so when we try to have better running form and better running technique and efficiencies, sleep is where we archive those really good memories to have the better efficiencies. By far, sleep is what we want. It's very difficult to do. Professional athletes are able to do it quite, quite well, especially endurance athletes. They get eight to 10 hours of sleep at night, and then they wake up in the morning, they do their morning workout, come back, have breakfast, take a little nap. And then they go out for a midday workout, and they come back, they have lunch, they take a little nap. And then they wake up, they have a evening workout, afternoon workout, they come back, they have, a, they have some good dinner, they spend some time with family, and then they go to bed. And then they do it again the next day. Most of their schedule is all about sleep. They do a lot of hard training, to give themselves that stimulus, but to recover, sleep is what they're focusing on. The second recovery technique, split into two parts. One is called lifestyle nutrition. The other one is sports performance nutrition. We're gonna talk about both. We're gonna start with lifestyle nutrition. I'm not gonna go too far into lifestyle nutrition. There's a lot of different theories on lifestyle nutrition. Everyone has a different theory on lifestyle nutrition. And you might be subscribing to the paleo diet or ketosis or vegetarianism or veganism. You might be doing Atkins. You might be doing the raw diet. Um, you might be doing any of these different types of diets that are out there and different types of lifestyle nutrition that are out there. Myself, what I follow is I look at a plate. I have three quarters of that plate that's covered with some sort of rich plant base and then I have a quarter of it that's filled with some sort of fat protein. It doesn't matter what diet you're into, paleo, veganism, vegetarianism, ketosis, uh, raw diet, whatever it may be, it's the same thing. You look at a plate, three quarters of it should be some sort of plant, a quarter of it should be some sort of fat protein. Pretty simplistic there. You need to have good lifestyle nutrition to get all the micronutrients and phytochemicals that your body needs in order to repair itself and have the resources to repair itself. That's what it comes down to. On the other hand, we'll talk about sports performance nutrition. This is more about after workout recovery. So when we're talking about after workout recovery, <clears throat> we're talking about being able to provide our bodies with some sort of calorie base to, re to be able to replenish the glycogen stores in our muscles. Typically, <clears throat> we talk about having about 100 calories after about 45 minutes to an hour of working out, about 100 calories of something that has a four to one carbohydrate to protein ratio. The research shows that that replenishes the blood sugars in our muscles or the glycogen in our muscles most effectively. There is some research out there that's showing that women 
are somewhere between a 3 and a 3.3 to 1 carbohydrate to protein ratio, whereas men is more of that 4 to 1 carbohydrate to protein ratio. So there are differences in terms of sex, but generally speaking, we are looking to have a little bit of high glycemic carbs and a little bit of protein. That is sports performance nutrition. It allows ourselves to be able to say, okay, we've used up all this sugar during our workout. We're going to replenish it really quickly, the first 30 minutes after a workout, so we can do it really quickly, and our bodies are most open to replenishing it within 30 minutes. And in that way, our bodies can then focus on the recovery that it needs after that. So where do you get this 4 to 1 carbohydrate to protein ratio, or 3.3 to 1 carbohydrate to protein ratio to rebuild yourself and recover? Well, there are a couple different aspects to it. You can look at chocolate milk. Chocolate milk is a great component for a 4 to 1, 3.3 to 1 carbohydrate to protein ratio, higher on the glycemic index, and allows your body to recover more quickly after a workout. Um, Some other companies make some products. This is called Tailwind Nutrition. Uh, something called Rebuild Recovery, and this is something that has some protein, has some carbohydrates for that great recovery for replenishing glycogen back into the muscles. So there are different aspects that are out there and different products that are out there that you can use for this to occur. The next recovery technique that I'm going to talk about is something called compression and elevation. Elevation was the theory and the idea that we want to raise our legs a little higher than our heart, to promote blood flow back to the heart. A lot of fluid pools at the extremities throughout the day. And so elevation was a theory to help with that pooling to be able to get more circulation throughout the body. Unfortunately, most of us don't have the time to put our legs up, put our heads down, and do work and do different things in our lives while we're doing that. It takes a lot of time. And so a lot of companies came out with something called compression. Compression, on the other hand, something like these here, CEP, tall socks, compression, is a graduated compression, uh, highest you can get in terms of compression, in terms of uh, medical grade, without a prescription. And what happens is these type of socks allow for the body to be able to aid in compression from the toes all the way back up to the knee and that aids in blood flow back to the heart. And so it helps with that fluid buildup that you might have at the extremities. This allows, just like all recovery techniques do, this allows to be able to take out the toxins that were created and bring in resources that you need to recover. That is what recovery is all about. So let's talk about massage. Massage is a great recovery technique for couple different reasons. One is it improves blood flow. With recovery, if you're able to improve blood flow without damaging your body, that's what you want for recovery. It helps tremendously with bringing in resources, taking out toxins. Now, there's another aspect to massage that helps quite a bit. Massage also stimulates nerve endings. And if we know anything about running form or swimming form, When we talk about swimming form or running form, we're talking about neuromuscular communication between the central nervous system and the peripheral. And so when we're talking about stimulating nerve endings, we're allowing that signal to become stronger. And so massage is a great way to be able to do that. Now, we can pay someone to and and go to a massage therapist. Uh, There are some other things that we can use for massage. So different aspects. One's called roll recovery, the R8. The R8 allows yourself to uh, really spring activated. Hurts quite a bit, hurts really good. You have something called the stick, some other type of roller uh, that you can use with your hand on either side and pull back and forth. Not as intense, uh, rec- roll recovery is a bit more intense, um, but, a great, whoop, but a great way to, this is a great way to be able to travel with This is something that's really good for those sessions where you really need a good massage. And then you have things like foam rollers. Foam rollers are a great way to do that as well. Some, this is one from Roll Recovery, which allows a little space 
for the spinal cord as well. Um, much more comfortable to use this and actually allows yourself to massage the erector muscles on this foam roller as well. Uh, but a great way to massage the legs and the back, all right, anything that you have uh, that you're using body weight for. So massage, bringing in resources, taking out toxins, improving blood flow, and stimulating nerve endings. So in terms of massage, yes, it stimulates nerve endings and improves blood flow. There's one other point that I want to make with, with massage. There's something called trigger point therapy. And so there are different things called trigger points, basically where one part of the body might be very triggered up or tight, which affects the other part of the body. And the pain does not correlate in the same place as the tightness. So to give you an example, personally, my big right toe gets sore every once in a while. And it occurs when I'm sitting for long periods of time at a desk. What happens is, is my glute min directly underneath the pelvic bone gets very, very tight. And that pulls, that starts a chain reaction down the leg that pulls on my big toe and makes it very uncomfortable. And so when that occurs, it's not that I'm going to be working my big toe and trying to figure out what's going on there. I have to roll my hips. I have to take some sort of a cross ball or some sort of foam roller and really dig in and allow that to release the trigger point to release that's up near the pelvic bone, the glute min. That's called a trigger point. There is a great resource, a great uh, website called triggerpoints.net. Please take a look at it. All right. Uh, try to support them if you can. And they're a great resource where you're able to look at pictures of the body and you'll have the pictures of the body here. And what happens is, is that you'll have that, you'll point to a spot that you are hurting. Where is the point that you are hurting? At that point, you'll see all the red spots. Obviously darker red are more likely Lighter red are less likely, but they can occur in any of those spots. So take a look at the red spots and then see where the X's are. So if you're having trouble with your big toe, take a look at where the X's are for that red in the big toe. It'll be probably in the hips. So take a look at triggerpoints.net, great resource for trigger point therapy. Let's talk about contrast hydrotherapy. Big fancy term for an ice bath and a hot tub. That's it. And switching between the two. There is some research from contrast hydrotherapy switching between the two that aids in recovery, aids in blood flow, aids in inflammation um, reduction, and helps with recovery from one workout to the next. Now, I don't have time for an ice bath. What do I do? Well, is it February? Is it March? Is it January? And you're in the Northeast? Most likely, the water coming out of your tap is somewhere between 55 and 60 degrees. Ideal temperature for an ice bath, 55 degrees. Perfect. Fill up the bath with really cold water, don't need any ice, you have yourself an ice bath. Drain the water, take a really hot shower, fill up the bath again, get back into the tub. There you go. Now you have contrast hydro hydrotherapy. Really easy to switch back and forth when you don't have all of the high-tech gadgets and bats and all of this that, that some uh, D1 programs may have. And so you can do it at home quite easily. So contrast hydrotherapy is a great way to be able to improve blood flow, bring in toxin or bring in resources, take out toxins, and be able to recover faster from one workout to the next. And the last one, low-level exercise. So low-level exercise is anything that you can do that is low level. It improves blood flow and allows you to be able to bring in resources, take out toxins. Now, low level exercise may be a very light walk. It may be some stretching, some lighter stretching, uh, some lighter stretching positions, dynamic stretching, uh, but very, very light. You don't wanna be working yourself. That's not the point of low level exercise. Aqua jogging, getting into the pool and being able to run or getting into the pool and floating all right floating getting on an aqua belt or some sort of flotation device and kind of just going through the water nice and easily just the compression of the water itself with the motions of full ranges of motions that you're able to do aids in reco recovery quite a bit and so that's called low level exercise anything that you can do that doesn't damage your body but improves blood flow as well in terms of movement 
So low level exercise, a great way to do it. You have to be careful though, because we get into these, we get into these um, traps where we're like, you know what? I'm gonna get low level exercise. You go and do it, and you're like, I could do a little bit more. I can do it a little bit harder. I can do it a little bit faster. That's not what we want here. We want something very, very light. And so we have to have the discipline to be able to have, uh, be able to do and perform low level exercise. To be able to say, make sure that we're not damaging our bodies, we're bringing in resources, taking out toxins, improving blood flow. That's all you want with low level exercise. Now, these are all different recovery techniques that aid in recovery from one end to the other. What I want to impress upon all of you. Sleep is the most important recovery technique. Lifestyle nutrition is the second most important recovery technique. If you can't focus on those two things first, generally speaking, don't focus on everything else. All right. You want to be able to focus on getting really good nutrition and getting really good sleep. And that's the priority first. Everything else comes a little bit second. And so that's what we want to focus on. We want to focus on those first two and then work down the line. Obviously, there are times when we might have acute or chronic injuries that crop up that completely put us on bed rest. And so some of the other recovery te techniques like trigger point therapy and massage and different things of that sort may be necessary and with sacrificing some of the other sides of nutrition or sleep. Um, but generally speaking, we want to focus on nutrition and sleep first. So thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for taking a look. Put any comments you may have in the bottom section. Let me know if there's any questions. You can always email me at matt at confluencerunning.com. And I appreciate you tuning in.